Good morning, testing, making sure this is working. But if the bird There are people out there? Sorry. If you're out there and you can see me, say hello. I'm trying to figure out this Facebook thing to see if uh, I have comments. I'm trying to find it on the Facebook page. Let's see. If you're there, if you would say hi, that would be great. I'm not able to see comments right now, unfortunately. So if you log on, however you do that, go ahead and just say hi so I know you're there. <laughs> Beautiful day out there today, that is for sure. Wonderful day. Let me see here. I'm looking to see if I can find the comment section here. That's Facebook page. Sorry I'm not tech savvy. Thanks to Stephen Weiss this morning that helped me. Make sure again that I could uh, navigate Facebook. Let's see. Alrighty. 
getting pretty close to the morning hour at nine o'clock. Again, I don't know who is there. Sorry. It's good to see you if you're logging on. If you would say something in the comments, it'd be great just to be able to see if I've got everything set up okay. I hope so. Looks like more people are coming on live now. Unfortunately, again, I cannot see one comment. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> You're a truly captive audience. Anything I say, you cannot comment on. <laughs> Not really. Let's see. Yeah, I still don't have anything here. So if you're logging in, if you'd say hello, that I know you're getting it. I hope you can hear it. It's funny in this area in the kitchen. Uh, the kids' church works perfect uh, for doing anything live. We've done a lot of stuff with that with kids' church and different things. Um, but I noticed in the video thing, I look like I'm extremely tall, <clears throat> like a giant. Sorry about that too, otherwise I'm just a talking head when I move it down, so. Let's see here. Let me see. Oh, it's working, thank you. Oh, good, okay, all people are here are commenting, very good, thank you for the text, Sherry and John. Sorry, I was going to ask you though. I thought it would be good. At least I can look in the comments later. Um, usually, as a question of the day, and one of the things I was hoping to see—I don't know why it's not coming on my page here—was you know um, for you to share some things about some answered prayers. It's always so encouraging. You know, Sherry and Susan—they always do such a good job with prayer requests, but they also provide updates, which is so encouraging because oftentimes we hear. A request which are wonderful and to be able to partner and be a part of people's needs and to have that trust and to pray for and be a part of that it's a it's a, a privilege but even even so with that it's so encouraging too when we hear about things of how God has answered those prayers but I thought it'd be good just to kind of hear or put on notes about some things for those that can see the commentary uh, today about times in which God has answered prayer for you it could be present be passed, uh, but those thoughts and, and those those simple statements, it just is encouraging. Um, just like the sunny day outside today, what a beautiful day. I, I plan on doing some writing and some stuff today, uh, the contacts with families, I'm going to do it outdoors today, I'll tell you what, some of that sunshine, that is it vitamin D that we get from there, I think it's vitamin D, I think, <laughs> it just feels good, you know, I used to live in California and I like my son, mm -hmm. big time. So, very good. Well, in a few minutes here, we're going to start up uh, and uh, talk about the topic of the devotion today. Um, great message yesterday for those that were able to attend even in person or live stream on Romans yesterday with Daryl. Um, love that guy. He's a great, great pastor. It's a privilege. You know, I was talking with my uh, wife just yesterday. Um, we were out with our animals out back yesterday and taking them for a walk and uh, we're just talking about the, the joy it has been to be a part of Grace for a number of years now. You know, our children have uh, grown up at Grace and what wonderful privilege it is to have a church body of believers and family, church family really, to be a part of over so, so many years. Um, it hasn't been planned that way, just the way God has worked it out, and we are certainly grateful for that. That that's an answered prayer right there, you know. We're looking back, you know, when my wife and I, when we first uh, were looking for a church, we were married for a couple of years and recognized that we need to be consistent in our our walk and and consistent by being among other believers in the, in the professions that we were working at. Um, stepping in the doors of grace that first day, I've, I've said to many before. Rita and Kelly Houston on a Super Bowl Sunday, uh, they just made it feel like home, and it's been our home ever since. So that that was an answered prayer too. So if you have answered prayers that you'd like to share, please do that. We'll take a just a couple more minutes 
Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing enough to be able to read comments, but I will look through them later. Uh, so be nice, <laughs> but I'll, I'll read them later uh, to, to see about some of those answered prayers in your life because they, they are encouraging. And that's what's so great about testimony nights and testimonies. Uh, you know, God is about uh, healing work in all of us at all times. And, uh, you know, uh, the miracles he works every day, we think of miracles as physical healing, but uh, I know they certainly are. Those are certainly needed, uh, obviously, um, for the temples that we re our soul resides in. But to, to hear the, the miracles that take place each day, um, on a spiritual level and lives and changed lives transformed lives so just keep those coming if you've been writing them i trust you probably have we are going to get ready to start here and uh and um so our topic today is when things don't fit into the box and uh so i hope you'll be encouraged today what in our devotion time but we're certainly going to uh lift this time up to the Lord first and foremost as we get to, to talk about his word and uh, I thank you for being here again sorry I can't tell who's here but I know you're out there <laughs> so we'll pray dear father God we just thank you for this beautiful day the sunshine I know for me just lifts my spirit but every day your word your relationship in our lives lift our spirit Lord, I thank you for the, the, just the God that you are and the shepherd you are to us, leading us through this life as we are travelers through it. Be with us in this time together right now. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I told you what it is really today that the topic is when things don't fit into the box. That, that could be the the sub theme of 2020 right I don't know what type of person you classify yourself as uh, type A or type B when I was in college many many moons ago uh, in one of our psychology classes they talked about the type A person and the type B person you know, the type A person quite simply for in my definition could be that highly efficient uh, person that at times is uptight um, when they can't wait maybe um, when they're when you're driving down the road, a type A person is like the Mario Andretti, the, the Jeff Gordon, the Danica Patrick, the Dale Earnhardt. They're they are going, mm, they're passing people, they're doing all those kind of things. If you're a type B person, typically maybe more laid back. Um, I wouldn't say you're 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 less intense about your goal oriented. You know, when you're looking and trying to do goals, you're less intense about it. Uh, they they talking about that highway model when traveling down the road you're more apt to see the flowers alongside the highway than just racing down it. You know, I, I don't believe that we honestly can be categorized in just two alphabetical, stereotypical types, you know, two letters of the alphabet. In my opinion, whatever our alphabetical designation is, we, like, we all like it when life makes sense, you know, and things go as expected. I don't care if you're type A, type B, when things aren't, going as expected it's, it's troubling for either one if you're if you're trying to fit us into either one of those categories when things don't fit into the box it's very difficult you know speaking of boxes when i was a child growing up in the 70s like most children i had a toy box and i shared my toy box with my brother we shared a room and it was a really nice toy box. It was a nice wood toy box. It had a, a central area where I could stuff all my toys in. And it had uh, two side areas where I could stuff things in. As you notice, I did a lot of stuffing of toys. <laughs> uh, there were two openings on each side. In the middle was a shelf area where I could display my personal treasures, you know, the toys that were the higher echelon toys in my mind, you know. You know, at age three, that toy box, uh, really, it felt pretty large. And it was great for several reasons. Not only for stuffing my toys into the box, but it also could be used as a fort. When I took all my toys out, I could climb in it, use it as a fort. I could use it as a spaceship. Whatever my imagination, uh, you know, was driving me to do on a given day. 
I can still remember the shelves on it too. Really, honestly, in my mind's eye, when putting this devotion together, I can remember looking up at it and seeing my my Superman and my Batman action figures and my special little stuffed cat. Yeah, well, a puppet cat. It wasn't stuffed. Don't worry, it was a stuffed cat. It was a, it was a puppet. Don't worry, I didn't have stuffed cat. That was a weird toy. That would be a weird toy, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> um, but I had those toys on there, and there seemed to be a place for everything on my toy box. And as you know, at the age of three, at the ripe old age of three, a life was uh, extremely simple. And thanks to my parents, uh, it was, by all definitions, a carefree life. And a time which I can look back with fond memories of appreciation and truly really sheltered from the things that my parents faced and the lives of people around me. And as a, an adult, I recognize the gifts my parents gave me in childhood, certainly. And as I would grow older, as we all do, if we're around long enough, I, I grew older and I too would be influenced by the perceptions of things and the order of things in life going on around me. As a child, the thing that was wonderful about this toy box, I was able to take my belongings when it was time to clean up, even though, you know, as a kid, you don't like cleaning up and it's a hard job. But when it came time to clean up, I was able to take everything off the ground and just put it right back into the box, stuff it in there, and after the end of the day, it was all in there, all put in. It was terrific. You know, at the age of three, my life literally and figuratively fit in the box, the toy box. You know, at times, it would be kind of nice to think about what if life was like a toy box? You could actually take everything and uh, take everything in this life and just stuff it into an area and that it would all magically fit together at the end of the day and that everything would be uh, completely taken care of. Da daily worries that we'd have uh, could be placed on the shelf uh, or it could be smushed together with things that made complete sense. You know, the year 2020 uh, has been a defining year for many. Um, there are things and situations that we have all challenged us, you know, that we've all, we've all been a part of that have been challenging. It could be fair to really say that the year, or not really, that nothing about the year 2020 fits into the box when it comes to that, the proverbial box. It doesn't fit into the box, what we call uh, the norm. And, and no matter our alphabetical designation, type A, type B, C, the whole letter of the alphabet, it, it has been unsettling and, and life-changing, to say the least. And that's just for us that have not had been diagnosed with COVID or have had a loved one that has experienced that hardship or have passed because of it. It has not been an easy year. But I am comforted in knowing that we serve a Lord and Savior uh, that is aware of all that we experience as travelers, uh, as sojourners uh, through this world. I'm going to read a portion of scripture from 1 John uh, 5.14, and it states the following. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I'm going to read it one more time because it's such a, it's just such a great verse. 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, I don't pretend to be a big theologian, but I, I, I like to go to a commentary or two to be able to read some of the things in the first to find out the original intent. And so I did that with this verse. And interesting enough that uh, John, in this scripture, uses the word confidence, which was the original word. I'm probably going to say it wrong or pronounce it wrong, but it was, the word was parousia, which illustrates uh, the freedom of speech, that we can come, become, you know, come boldly. And so when it talks about this is the confidence we have in approaching God, we can come boldly to him with freedom of speech. It's a wonderful thing. You know, not only our Lord and Savior, Christ, not only did he make a way for us to be saved, but through that same Christ, we can come to our Lord, our creator, and come to him with the freedom of speech and to speak boldly to him, the things that we experience. Now, 
we can also be assured that he is listening. You know, that's another thing. It's one thing to come boldly and petition our request. It's quite another thing to have a God and creator that is listening to us. I tell you, that is a wonderful thing to think that God is listening to us when we come to him and approach him. One commentary said this as well, which I liked. It said, God is always listening and it, to his children. And it says in this commentary that he is more ready to hear than we are to pray. Like, wow. You know, we, we come to God in our emergency prayers. We come to God in our thanksgiving and our praise. But that, that when I read that commentary, I made me think, wow, that's amazing to think that God is more prepared and ready to listen than we are even to pray. Next devotion, I will be talking about prayer and seeking God's will and the fact of, and through prayer, how God is so willing and wanting to do a good work in us so that he can do a good work through us. But today, I just want us to take comfort in this time when things don't fit in the box, that we can know the fact that we can come to God with confidence in prayer to our maker and that he is indeed listening. He cares for us. You know, he is more capable to take care of the things we care each day. And he's able to place them in order. As our creator, he can lift our burdens. He can remove our burdens. He can lift our worries. So by surrendering our will to him, he can make all the things in life fit together for his story in our life. Even when things don't fit in the box. Well, I thank you for being here today. I want to clarify again. I did not have a stuffed cat. It was my <laughs> my puppet cat. I don't know what it's like. My parents did not give me a stuffed cat. So don't, if I'm strange, it's not because of that. <laughs> so, uh, but let's pray in all seriousness. I want to express some gratitude, God. Thank you for being here today. And take heart again, knowing that our creator, who our creator wants us to come to him. He hears us when we come to him. And he's more than capable to put things in order in our lives so we can trust him completely. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for your word, God, that is powerful. It's life-changing. It course corrects us. It, it puts us on a foundation in which we can stand on. When things don't make sense in this life, we can trust completely in your word and have full faith and confidence in it. Thank you, God, for hearing us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to give our request to you. Thank you that you are concerned about what is on our hearts and minds. Thank you that we can lift our burdens to you and trust that you will hold them for us. And God, thank you that you are wanting to do a good work in us, that you desire to work through us and you desire to partner with us. God, I just pray for all those that are a part of this moment this morning that you would watch over them and keep them safe in your care today. I don't know what situations each might be facing, Lord, but I'm certainly praying and knowing that you know every, every minute detail and you are there for them. Help us to be the church, Lord. Help us to be the church to our neighbors. Help us to be a church to the, our own members and brothers and sisters, God, so that if we should be given the privilege of hearing a, a concern, that we might in good faith act upon it. We love you, Lord, and it's in your precious name we say, amen. Thank you for being here today, guys. We love you, and I hope your day is as bright and great as the sun that is shining outside. Take care, and as I say, God bless and go bless. Bye, guys. Love you.